Permission to come aboard, sir. Granted. Just don't take off your helmet until the dock checks you out. I guess that's what happens when you don't take a bath for two years. While I joked with the captain, inside I was a bundle of nerves. Welcome back, Major. Let's get you checked out and cleaned up for your debriefing. Just stick to your story and everything will turn out all right. Major Reynolds, I've been instructed to debrief you by the President. What would you like to know? For starters, where's the rest of your crew? Unfortunately, they didn't survive the mission. That's apparent. What we want to know is, what happened to them? It all started after we successfully landed on Mars. We overshot our landing area and were forced to trek to the habitat. Thank God, there it is. I don't know about you, but something doesn't look quite right. A meteor shower must have struck while we were still in orbit. Shit, it looks like the rover took a hit too. The last time I saw a vehicle that dented was when my little brother borrowed my dad's car. Let's hope it's nothing that duct tape can't fix. We knew if the hab was breached, we were finished. Well, at least the lights are on. That's a good sign. We could only hope and pray that everything inside was functional. Good news. The air is breathable. Bad news. The link to Earth is down. That means one of us is going to have to make their way back to the lander to phone home. The meteor shower must have clipped the antenna. I'll have to go out and try to fix it. Flip a coin, will ya? I'm going to do an inventory of the supplies while you're gone. I'm in charge, so I'll be the one who hikes back to the lander. So your arrival had a few hiccups. That still doesn't explain why you're the only one who got back alive. I was getting to that. When the commander failed to return, we went out to search for him. We found him lying on his back halfway to the lander. Something must have gone wrong with the environmental controls in his suit. We had no choice other than to carry him back to the hab. While the commander was still breathing, he was unresponsive. All we could do was pump him full of fluids and hope for the best. What did mission control have to say about your situation? Since it takes 20 minutes for a signal to reach Earth, I couldn't wait for a response. Your commanding officer was critically injured, yet you couldn't take the time to report the situation back to Earth? We had more pressing problems to deal with. If we didn't repair the hab, we were all as good as dead. If I remove the antenna from the lander, I can replace the broken one on the hab. While you're gone, Mia and I will see if we can spackle the dents on the roof. For the next three days, we labored to repair the hab to make sure it wouldn't fail us. Our transport didn't fare quite so well. I'm afraid the rover is toast. If you could fix the radio, why can't you repair our ride? There's a fist-sized hole in the crankcase. I guess that means we'll have to hoof it for the duration of the mission. Oh, man! When did Commander Lancaster succumb to his wounds? We buried him in the Red Martian soil the next morning. I'm sorry to hear that. We all knew the risks when we volunteered for the mission. On Mars, you have to worry about everything from meteor showers to solar storms that can prove lethal. Are you saying the Martian environment itself was your enemy? Even the dust storms on Mars can kill. Unlike Earth, Martian dust storms can blanket the planet and last for months. That's how we lost Chang. What do you mean you lost him? Chang headed back to the lander to retrieve some parts. Hey, fortune cookie. I just took a look at the radar and there's a storm heading your way. I guess I'll have to double time it back to base. This looks like a bad one. I advise you to stay in the lander until it blows itself out. I'd consider it if I wasn't more than halfway back. While we could communicate with Chang, there was nothing we could do to guide him safely home. Why didn't he just hunker down and wait it out? His suit only contained enough air for 12 hours. The storm didn't let up for three days. And there wasn't anything you could do to help him? On Mars, there's no GPS network. All we can do is rely on dead reckoning. After the storm abated, Dr. Murphy and I scoured the surface looking for him without success. That left the two of you to fend for yourselves. The tasks of maintaining the HAB and completing the mission was a job and a half for the two of us. Why didn't you simply abort the mission and head back to Earth? A return window only opens every 18 months. Like it or not, we were in for the duration. I see. Tell me why you lost communication with mission control. Without our chief engineer, it became increasingly difficult for us to maintain the station's systems. It was just a matter of time before things began to fail inside the HAB. When the radio failed, we came up with an alternate method of communication. We knew the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter passed over our base every other day. 
so we came up with a way to stay in touch with mission control that didn't require a radio. Why couldn't you hike back to the lander to report back to Earth? We didn't dare head that far afield for fear that another dust storm would catch us by surprise. Another danger we faced were solar mass ejections that could emit lethal doses of gamma rays. Once we lost our link to Earth, we stopped receiving solar weather reports. We only dared venture outside at night until our departure day arrived. As long as nothing critical went wrong, we had four months before we could head for home. But something did go wrong, didn't it? Six weeks before our scheduled departure, Dr. Murphy insisted on climbing atop the HAB to see if the antenna was the source of our radio problem. I told her it was a bad idea, but she wouldn't listen. On the way back down, she slipped and fell, cracking her visor. I dragged her inside as quickly as I could while hoping her injuries weren't all that serious. But I was mistaken. Is that what took the life of Dr. Murphy? Not right away. I did everything I could to nurse her back to health, but the injury to her lungs was too severe. I don't mean to sound callous, but your mission certainly seemed to be accident-prone. What can I tell you? Isolation and stress has a way of negatively affecting everything from sleep to cognitive ability. And yet you seem to have come through the ordeal without too much of a problem. The only thing that got me through the five-month trip home was watching the earth and moon get bigger in the window. When I finally splashed down, I thought I left that nightmare behind me. I apologize, Major. I just want to make sure I can give the President a complete picture of what happened to you out there. Tell her we did what we had to do to survive. There it is. I hope there aren't any ghosts waiting for us inside. Don't even joke about a thing like that, Jack. Knock, knock. Is anybody home? Oh, my God. Madre de Dios. Jesus. It looks like the Donner Party camped here. Race to the stars, pushing bounds, building rockets, shaking grounds. Chase the glory in the night, fire trails and in the sky bright.